Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays. Well today it's the time for a weekly update of how things have been going on in Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. So this is the uh, the pack where we've got lots of um, extra stuff put in to make space exploration a little bit harder and a, and a bit more interesting. And as I've been saying, as I was saying on the stream, we are now uh, being sponsored by Trefoil.be. So if you need a um, if you need a gaming server and you want to you want to get uh, get a bit of a discount on it, head over to Trefoil.be/LawrencePlays. Sign up there and use the code LawrencePlays in the uh, in, in when you check out in order to get the uh, discount. Let's have let's get started and see what we've been doing. I'm going to run along the bus first because this is where we've been basically doing building up lots and lots of stuff, and so it's where the, the excitement and a lot of the, a lot of the new stuff has been has been going on. And then we'll talk about what's been going on around the rest of the base as well. So we've finally got cliff explosives, and that's absolutely wonderful because the cliffs are incredibly frustrating. So we um we gra we've been grabbing cliff explosives from there, and then running around having an absolute frenzy of destruction. So we've now got all kinds of weird things, uh, little cursed bits of bus like this, where there used to be a cliff coming along here, as you can probably guess. Um, so we've got this winding around it like that um, but now there's no cliff there so it just looks like we we're drunk when we made the um, when we made the uh, the base that bit of the base and there are various other places that are like that as well like this bit here what's going on here oh that must have been another there must have been another cliff in here or something like that so yeah there's quite a few little bits and pieces like that now but you know it means in the future at least we can blow them up when we, when, when, when we need to get past them and get them out of the way so that's really nice to have and in order to get that running, we needed that that needed the sulphur. So we we'd done the research a week or two ago, and we got everything we needed to make this, except for the sulphur for the um for the uh, for the explosives to go into it. So Mark went in. He put in a um, a, a small um, oil processing facility up here. So this is going to be fairly temporary. We think um, we're going to have 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 a better um better 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 system than this in the future. But at the moment, this is taking the oil that's coming out of the um the core fragment processing up here so we'll see this tank is now nice and empty it's being passed down here and it's being pumped into the uh, into the system down here we've also got an additional supply of oil coming in from this drop-off station down here so the oil is going to be being, being brought in here by train because we also have another oil mine up here where we're just trying to get we, we, there's an oil patch here of 3.7 million so ideally we'd like to pull this out of the ground as quickly as possible dump it into trains so it can be taken away in order to then allow us to start using this area for building other stuff because this, this is in, in the way of the smeltery it was, I say it's in the way it's a little bit in the way but there's actually quite a lot of room up here so maybe we can actually just work around it and and have have one of the longer processing chains in here like maybe, maybe steel processing could be up here for example or glass because that requires crushing and then um and then and then and then cooking as well so we can we can fill in this area with with landfill that's not a problem but get it but we don't want to waste this oil because when we look around there aren't there isn't an enormous amount of oil available and we're aware we might get through it quite quickly okay there's another patch of two and a half million there and three million there so we're probably going to be okay for a while, but then that is it. And, you know, you get through a lot of... Well, there's a bit out, out, out there, but that's, that's 5 million, but it's outside the walls. So there's there's worries there. We, 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 we're going to need to make sure we... Um, we, we, we 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 expand fast enough to get the to get the oil, and then of course there's the free oil that's coming out of the core mining, but it's not coming out particularly quickly. And now we've started to use it, we're getting through it at a, at quite a rate. But as I say, that's allowed us to make the um. The, the cliff explosives, which is really nice. Then I needed to make a filtration plant um, here. That was that was fairly easy. The only problem is this this had this required lots and lots of weird things off the bus. So it was big engines, steel girders, automation cores, and glass. And those there wasn't there didn't seem to be anything else that used the same sort of things. So this is just sort of sitting here a bit on its own. Maybe in the future there'll be there'll be more buildings that require exactly the same thing. We can extend this up to make a few more different things. But at the moment it's just a, a rather odd little single thing off the side of the uh, off the side of the bus, which is a little bit weird. But the reason I needed the filtration plants was because I needed to start making silicon. Silicon uh, goes into all kinds of electronics stuff, as you'd expect, and it's made by pulverising stone down into sand, then filtering that, so hence the filtration plant, uh, in order to get quartz, and then you cook the quartz with um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a furnace in order to get uh, silica, silicon out of it. So it's a little bit of a, 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 a bit of a process, should we say, and we're also not producing quite as much of it as we would need to keep all of this running, I should probably, and we're not producing enough of it in general. But I don't expect this to stay here for very long. The reason I've built this off the bottom of the bus, where things aren't supposed to go, TM, um, is because this is meant to be very, very temporary. So at some point, the, the main smelting area up here will also start making silicon, because it's another thing where you're smashing up sand, smashing up stone and crushing, and, and then cooking it. 
granted with another step in the middle but that's fine so I'll, i expect this to be made in the um, in the general smeltery area so we'll be bringing in it bringing silicon in by the train load and then passing it on into, into the rest of the system and the reason i needed that silicon is up here somewhere yes we're now we're now trying to make the um, the red circuits now there's quite a lot that goes into a red circuit the silicon is required for these electronic components this is looks looking at the pictures this is well there's some little some little circuit boards some chips as a capacitor is that a uh, yeah transistor it might be I can't see the third leg but it might be a transistor um, those sorts of things all being made in here chucked out onto the uh, onto the onto the belt and being passed around now we're going to need to make these a lot faster than we are at the moment because as you can see well a little bit faster than we are at the moment if we look at the the belts down here you can see that the the outer side of the belt is backed up all the way even on this one that's going down here off to parts unknown but the other side isn't so I mean I could put in a belt balancer in here like um, this uh, not there though because there isn't room there we go and that'll now allow it to fill up both sides both sides of the other bus a little bit more thoroughly and we'll see if that then starts to back up it should do um, so yeah, you, in order to make the red circuits, you need to first make the electronic components, which is glass and plastic and silicon um, in, in fairly fairly significant quantities. So the silicon is not remotely keeping up at the moment. So that's one of the reasons we want to go off and expand it and have, have more of it being produced elsewhere. Yes, I could expand the system that's producing it at the moment without too much difficulty. But if we're going to move it off fairly soon, then I don't think there's much point. So, yes, that's making all these. We also needed to start making the plastic as well. So as well as the sulphur, we've got the processing facility here that's turning the, the, um, the oil into, um, into sulphur and into, into plastic. That requires a run of, um, what's the name, of stone to be brought in as well. But fortunately, we've got a, a, a nice steady stone supply coming in here from the, um, from, the, from the core mining. And impressively, that actually seems to be enough. Um, <clears throat> it's all flowing down here. Down here. Now, now that we're not just trying to endlessly fill these warehouses up, at least, um, there's enough of it going into here. And then we've got this control to set only when there's more than a certain amount to, uh, to, 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 to output from here and into, into the station. But we're pulling quite a decent amount of coal out and turning it into plastic. Now, once again, this isn't going to stay here. Once we get a proper oil area set up, that's going to be put, that's going to be having an input of oil from by train. It's going to have an input of water, hopefully from just from a pump. It's going to have an input of coal. And then it's going to output everything. So it's going to output the uh, the copper, the, sorry, the, the the sulfur and the plastic, and who knows what else? Lots and lots of stuff, anyway. Um, yes. So that 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 got these being being made, and there was, as, as you can see, there's quite a lot, quite a lot of stuff going into this. Then um, all of that goes into being made into the red circuits, along with some more cables. That's fairly straightforward, and we have actually caught up on the red circuit necessities now, uh, which is quite nice. It won't last, but at the moment we have we have got enough red circuits. <laughs> oh. And having red circuits, well, one of the things that one of the things that allowed me to do, you'll see down here, I've fed it down to put it onto the bus, but I've also then split it so it's going backwards along the bus as well as forwards. And that's quite that's a good thing because it means that later, well, it means I can use it over here, where I needed it for making stack inserters. So we now have stack inserters and uh, filter stack inserters. Uses quite a lot of red circuits to make those because both stages require them, but. I don't really care. I mean, this one is green circuits, red circuits, steel gear. I got that one wrong when I was trying to make it. So I trying to put iron gears in, and it didn't want to know. But eventually, I was able to tap off a supply. I was bringing a yeah, brought a supply of steel up here as well, fed into the machine to make those. So that 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 worked out okay. And then inserter parts, um, which are being fed in fed in over here, over here from where they're being made for all of the other inserters. So it's quite interesting because we've got. The first one requires the inserter parts, sure, to make the burner inserter. But then you don't need them for the normal inserter, you just need automation and and, and power. Then for the fast ones, you need some circuits and, and some steel to make it a bit stronger and make it run faster. Then for the stack ones, you need more inserter parts. Maybe that's to make give it a bigger um, a bigger grabby handy thing to, to try and grab, uh, grab, the, grab more stuff at once. And some stronger gears and more circuitry to make it go faster and stuff, which is, I mean, this is sort of fair enough. Then the filter inserters require even more circuitry um, and some more steel gears and and and, 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 and to, 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 to allow the filtering to be done. So that means we now have, we can basically, I've, I have now stopped using yellow inserters. Um, we can now use the blue inserters for normal stuff, stack inserters when we need it to be fast, and stack inserters for when we need it to be, uh, sorry, and, and filter inserters for when we need to filter stuff. So I probably will just use, probably Knowing what I'm like, I'll probably just use these two for the, most of the rest of the run because you can always set these to be just stack inserters and they're not that much more expensive, especially later on in the run when we get to that point. 
But the other reason I've run this belt along here is that at some point in the future, we're going to be taking circuit production off the bus. We're not going to be making the green circuits on the bus. We're not going to be making the red circuits on the bus. We're going to be making them somewhere off in a, in a town of their very own. And then they'll be fed in through these this, this array of drop the array of drop off stations that's going to gradually grow here and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that will feed in to the um, feed in lots and lots of different belts of individual resources to get them onto the bus and, and start producing them a bit quicker, uh, or a bit more a bit more reliably, and without us then ending up pulling all of the copper off the bus in order to make the circuits. So that'll that'll make that a little bit better, a little bit more reliable, and it's probably going to be fed in from this end. So it's good to have the um, have the belt going up this way, and make sure you've reserved a row all the way along here, so you don't accident accidentally discover that there's I don't know a miscellaneous science pack being fed along where you want the red circuits to go. As part of the red circuit construction, you need green circuits as well. And one of the things I one of the things I've learned is that you don't use your main green circuit production. That's the what is it? This one. You don't use your main green circuit production for producing red circuits because you will just completely swamp it. It makes far more sense to start making your green circuits on site here. And I've switched over to the slightly more um, automatable no slightly more the recipe that uses more automated and, and more dense ingredients so i'm now turning stone bricks into stone slabs which we can then turn into the circuits and i've got with a little bit of prompting from chat which i'm which i very much appreciate i've managed to come up with this quite nice butterfly design where you've got a single um, assembly machine in the middle that's feeding the um feeding out the, the the stone slabs into these assembly machines and then the three ones making cables here and so this is all this is all the well this 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 area um, no, <laughs> this area there we go is all the is exactly the right ratio. So the the three to two to one to two to three uh, going across there is spot on to get to get all the machines running flat out all of the time, which is which is absolutely lovely. Um, and then with these belts across the top and bottom of here, it means we can then feed the um, feed the green circuits onto a, onto a single green belt and pass them out to, to to where they're needed to make the red circuits. And that's all working really nicely. One of the things that's occurred to me that would be quite nice once we've got better underground belts is perhaps have the the uh, this belt go underground here and then pop up here and have the inserter on the top. And that way you don't need you don't need these these undergrounds in the middle of here. Um, actually, you'd need you still no you'd still need them on on this one. Maybe it wouldn't make much of a difference, so it's not it's not really worth it. Uh, and a few underground belts in there doesn't doesn't matter. But yeah, having everything running by direct insertion is very nice. I I I, I really like this design now that now it's there, and it's just so copy pasteable as well. So we'll just take that and put another another two and another and another and another, and then eventually upgrade the belts and have another and another and feed more belts in from the sides and and so on. It's just it's just it's just a lovely little design. I'm very happy with that. So with the red circuits, yes, we were able to make the um, the stack inserters and the, and the filter inserters. We're also able to start making the um, the blue t science cards now. So that requires um, red circuits, obviously, and then more glass and uh, the base and the blank data cards. Feed them in with with some acid, and you can produce the chemical science packs or chemical science data cards. So that's allowed us to start doing lots more researches. There's lots of things down here that require blue science, so we've been working through quite a few of those. And that's going really nicely. I decided it was best to make the sulfuric acid on site rather than putting it on the bus. I mean, we could put it on the bus from here, but it feels it's a, it's a relatively small thing. There aren't a huge number of things that use sulfuric acid uh, on the, from the bus, so it seemed like having just having it here like this seemed like it seemed like a good way of doing it. Um, and yes, yeah, so that makes all of the uh, the the, uh, the blue data cards. We're having we're having a bit of a problem with the glass supply earlier, but that seems to be fixed now. We seem to have enough of it coming through, and the plastic seems to be running happily as well. So that's all all going quite nicely. And then on the subject of science, we also decided to get the combat science up and running. Now this is, this is um, mildly interesting um, because in order to make the, um, the what is it, what do they call the military tech, you need biter research data. So clearly analysing the biters to try and find out where the best place to shoot them in order to kill them as quickly as possible is and um, cue that bit of footage from uh, Starship Troopers. So to make that, you need you need the biomatter, which is obviously biter science evidence stuff like that, and you need to, uh, and coke and and steel in order to make those, and then then they're just passed directly through from here now th there's a bit of a speed imbalance here so we make five of these in 40 seconds so one every eight seconds these require one every 36 seconds so the i could i don't need anything like as many of these but it was nice and easy to just dump them in like this I, I suppose i could i could shuffle it around a little bit so there's one one of these machines feeding every two of these and that would halve the number of these machines i've got in here it would get the ratios a little bit closer to correct but it, it still wouldn't be quite right um and doing it more cleverly well, I, I, I suppose, yes, it would take a little bit more space and I can't be bothered and this works. So ha basically happy with that. <laughs> yes, basically.
So at the moment, we've got a large store, uh, storehouse of um, biomatter here that can be fed down, uh, fed down onto this belt here, and then used by all of the um, used by all the, the assembly machines to make the biter data. However, in the future, we may wish to switch over to. Um, to use to producing the biomatter in the other way so you can also make biomatter from petroleum um biomatter is that one um nope, wrong side there we go so biomatter can be made from oh you can either pick it up off the ground or you can make it out of petroleum gas and oxygen now this is a research we haven't done yet it is a research we can do because it's yellow um but we haven't we haven't done it yet we haven't got we haven't made oxygen capture systems yet so we thought while we're still expanding and we're making massive quantity we're producing massive quantities of the creep the biomatter we might as well just work through what we're what we're acquiring from the biter bases we're killing and use that up first and then when it starts to become a problem then we can worry about producing it in other ways but for now this is fine also needed coke as i said as we we solved this problem a couple of weeks ago when we were making steel though this is just putting in wood and coal into a into a furnace burning it burning it in a controlled way to get the coke out the other side uh, we seem to be burning wood rather than coal here um that's probably not the best way of doing it let's do that instead um <laughs> for all of all of these uh there's, there's no <laughs> there we go that's what i actually want that's how i want it to work Burn, burn the coal. I think burning. I think burning coal is better than burning wood. You get more. I think you get more fuel out of it, and it's a slightly more. It's a slightly easier to produce resource. I. I don't know. We'll. 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 We'll see whether that's actually worth doing or not. And then from there, yes, then this is quite exciting. We started making the um, the air purifiers. Now this is something that people in chat have been raving about. Apparently they're they're a little bit OP, but I don't see that as necessarily a bad thing. Um, and this this means this allows us to clean up our pollution a bit more effectively. Because if we look at the map, we are kicking out a lot of pollution in a lot of a lot of places, and it's starting to get out a bit close to the biters, like down here. It's starting to upset these guys down here. There aren't very many of them, but it is starting to upset them. And then up here, we're getting a little bit close to them. Over here, it's well, it was drifting. We seem to the, the pollution actually seems to have pulled back a bit, which is quite surprising. But again, it, it's a little bit of a, a minor problem. So we're thinking if we can make some of these air purifiers and whack them in around all of the places that are producing large amounts of pollution. So things like this power plant here that you can see it's pushing out black smoke. That's disgusting. Um, up here we've got another power plant that's pushing out. That's bur we're burning coal here. Oh, sorry, well burning processed fuel, but even that's just as bad. Um, we're burning. We've got mines here. Mines produce a lot of pollution. You can see we've got a, a coal mine over here. That's that's made this entire cloud here pretty much, I think. So we need to get in there, start being a bit cleaner, a bit tidier with all these things. And if we stick in a load of um, a load of the a load of the air purifiers, that should help a lot and allow us to clean up things a bit and, and hopefully get rid of a lot of the biter attacks. Now, as apparently they are a little bit OP, but you know what? I'm not sure I can bring myself to care about that very much. What I can bring myself to care about is the next uh, next revelation, and that's that we've now got robots. Yeah, finally, we can now start automating things properly. So, I f first set up the uh, machine here to build the build the robot ports. So we've got we've got um, a lot of those. Let's limit that a little bit more um, before we make it. Oh no, sorry, it's limited by ah. Now we can limit it by. Um, by the uh, by, by the conditions here, so I don't I don't need to do that. We can take that away. So now, what well, the difference here is, you, you there are three ways to limit um, limit output in, in in Factorio. The first way is to go in here and set the amount on the on, on the chest itself like that, um, and that means that the chest can't be filled up beyond that point. There are a couple of downsides to this though. One is that you then can't come along and just dump stuff from your inventory into the chest because this is counted as not usable. You can do it manually like that, but if you're trying to do lots and lots of um, stuff that's going to be a massive pain so you don't want to, you don't you don't really want to have to do that the second way is to link a cable from the inserter to the chest and tell the inserter using the um, having the enable uh, using the circuit network conditions which is not connected to but yeah you can uh, you can tell it to only insert when there's less than n in the chest where n is the number you want to have the third way, the, which is the best way, once you've got once you've got logistics systems up and running, is to go in here and, and connect the the uh, inserter to the logistics network, and then have a look across the entire logistics network for there being less than 50, and then only put then only put them in when there is. And that's brilliant because that means if you've if you've deconstructed an area and dumped all of the stuff from that into yellow chests somewhere, then it'll use that up first, and it won't produce more if there's still quite a lot in the yellow chest. So. It keeps things a bit more under control, a bit more balanced and managed, and and, and means you're not you, you don't you don't end up filling this one up when you've got a bajillion of them somewhere else that you don't want that you don't want to be using up. 
So making the uh, the robot boards was quite easy. It was just stuff I already had: little electric motors, steel girders, concrete, and red circuits. I'd made all of those before. But then going on to making the um, the, the actual robots themselves, which are a vital part of, robo of a robot system, things got a little bit more complicated. So. These uh, require flying robot frames, and then they require circuits as well, sure. They're red or green circuits, depending on which sort you're making. But they require circuits to make them. But they may need flying robot frames. Okay, so I start, well, let's go make flying robot frames. Well, that requires big electric motors, batteries, electronic components, and steel plates. Well, steel plates are easy, because they're on the bus. So I just pulled them in. Pulled them in. Electronic components, <clears throat> well, they were mildly problematic. But I'm making them over here. So I thought, okay, I'll come over here. I'll pull them off from here. So as well as making these, these data cards and the red circuits, let's pull them down here. We'll put them on the, on the bus down here and then we can pull them in. That's not too bad. But the big electric motors and the um, and the batteries were a little bit more of a challenge because we were I wasn't making those anywhere at this point. So came across here. Um, at bas batteries are fairly easy. Again, you need a supply of sulfuric acid. So we've got um, we've got sulfur and water being brought in here and Oh, no, and iron. There we go. That's iron. That makes sense. Been brought in here. That's making that's making sulfuric acid, which has been going out into here. And then over here, we're making the batteries out of copper and iron, more iron, and, and the sulfuric acid. So we're making lots of batteries. That, that's great. That's just working. Feeding them into a box here and then back out again. That's, that's all, all exactly as you'd expect. Working great. Then the, uh, the big electric motors. That, so here we needed steel, we needed the small electric motors, we need green circuits. No problem, I, th I hear you saying. That's that's all stuff you've already got on the bus. Why, why, what are you complaining about? Well, the other thing you need is you also need lube in order to... Because the, the big electric motors spin more, spin harder, there's more forces inside them. So you need some lubricant to um, to actually make the uh, make it not make it not damage itself. So, well, lubricant is made out of heavy oil. At this point, we didn't have any heavy oil, so I had to come off over here to the oil processing area and I borrowed one of Mark's oil processing machines here and set it from doing the, 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 the recipe that just produces petroleum gas to the recipe that produces all three, the petroleum gas, the light oil and the heavy oil. That's then um, being dealt with, oh dear, um, <laughs> yes that's being, it's coming out of here, we're then, have I got this, no I haven't got this wrong, we've just got too much uh, petroleum gas, we need to make more plastic or something. Right. So what I'm doing here is doing the heavy oil heavy recipe. So there's there's three recipes you can use to process oil. You can do the one that makes that just makes petroleum gas, um, produces 90 of it for 100 crude oil. Fine. You can do the one that's light oil heavy. So you process it, you get 70 light oil out, 20 heavy oil, and a bit of petroleum gas. Or you can do the um, the the one that's heavy oil heavy, which produces 70, 30, and 20. Because I specifically wanted the heavy oil here, I didn't want the light oil. We're not using light oil for anything yet. I decided that this one was a sensible one to go for, because obviously it's a sensible one to go for. So, I, I've, got, I've got this one making the, making heavy oil as much as possible, and then that's being passed up here the, through one of these really, really long underground pipes. These are amazing. Uh, up into here to be made into lube, which we can then pass off into the rest of the factory. Now, as you'll notice, this has not got any heavy oil in there. And that's because this pipe is filled up completely. We're not using the petroleum gas up fast enough, um, which is a weird position to be in, to be honest, because that almost never happens. Maybe we should be making it into biomatter because, yeah. So the, the light oil is then being pumped out here and then up it comes up here and is then cracked down into, into petroleum gas. That's more petroleum gas being made here. Um, but, you know, you need to get rid of the light oil somehow. So that's what we're doing. Um, it's interesting that we've got too much petroleum gas, so we're going to have to have a think about that next time. But, yes, that, mean, that means we now have a supply of lubricant. So I thought, well, let's feed it over to a station. This is probably a, mis a mistake, if we're being honest. Although that does mean there's a nice supply of lube up here, which can then be trickled back down into the system. Because my thought was, well, we're not going to, we're going to want to bring lube in into this area on the um, th through the train system anyway. So let's do it, go straight with straight up with trains. And let's rename this, this one as well to um, uh, lube supply. There we go. Um, so yeah, we'll want to we'll want to feed the lube from here over into the in, into onto here and then get it onto the bus. But since it's being made here temporarily, we thought, well, actually, let's just be lazy. So I've run a pipe down here because these underground long underground pipes are amazing. I've run it all the way down here, straight through the middle, straight through the uh, the stuff that's being made here, which we'll have to we'll probably move this when we go to put it on the bus properly. And then it's now we have lube on the bus being passed all the way down here. And then up here into the into to making these electric, big electric motors. Now these aren't making them remotely fast enough. I'm I'm fully aware of that. But I was waiting until we had the robots and the robot ports and everything, so I can just go. Yes, I would like some more of these, please, and do that and that and that and it will just happen it will just be made by by the robots now this probably won't actually happen yet because we haven't one of the things we need to do yet is make lots and lots of red um 
provider chests so we can then just put a an upgrade planner across the entire base and turn all of the um, all of the steel chests wooden chests and iron chests into passive provider chests and that way every and that way the bots will go out they'll upgrade everything to be to be um, then bot bottable and then that means the bots will then go out grab the belts grab the assembly machines inserted the pipes everything and we'll just start being able to build things so that's the um that's probably going to be the very first thing we do next time i think because that's just vital for the sake of my sanity <laughs> and i think have we got okay we don't and we also need to run robot ports all the way up here as well to uh, to make sure we've got full robot port coverage of the entire base now one of the interesting k2 things is when you go when you look at a robot port you have some options you can set it to normal mode construction mode or logistics mode at normal the difference is i don't think i'm gonna i don't know how well i'm gonna be able to show this so in normal mode you get this sort of coverage the standard exactly what you're used to from from base factorio where you have an area of logistics cover in the middle and then an area of construction cover around the outside of that put it into construction mode then we just have construction area but it's a bit bigger so you can see here we've got an extra chunk so this is this this is the one coming from the robot port i haven't fiddled with this is coming out of the robot port i have fiddled with so it's an extra chunk on all all the way around so it's a decent decent amount bigger alternatively you can put it in logistics mode in which case you get an extra chunk or an extra bit i don't know if that's actually a full chunk you get an extra bit of extra logistics cover but it doesn't do any construction uh, area around it so I think for the moment we're going to want them all in normal mode, but potentially in the future we might it might be useful to have what them in logistics mode along here, and then in construction mode out in places where we're actually building things but don't care about logistics. I'm actually the first part of that I'm not so sure about because if any damage happens along here we are going to want the bots to go out and, and repair it. So I think I might I take back what I just said. We're probably going to leave them all, all the ones along here in normal mode, but then when you but but if you go out to build up something like a um, like the ones that were put along the, uh, the 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 walls down here to keep everything repaired, or if you or if you want to build up a mine or a factory or a, a uh, an outpost that sort of thing, then it makes a lot of sense to go out and drop it down in construction mode because you're not going to be using it for logistics, so there's no point in having it in that mode. So yes, bots very nearly done. We're going to get those up and running. It's going to be glorious. It's going to make make things so much easier. I can finally start automatically requesting stuff using the personal logistics and not going oh I've run out of belts and I can start chucking random stuff that I don't want out onto the in, into the robot port network as well and if we have any common sense we will put down some yellow chests filtered to specific things in order to pull all of that stuff back out of the uh, logistics network and put it back onto the bus where it belongs <laughs> so yeah that'll be that'll be great looking forward to having all of that working so that's everything that's gone. That's that's all of the stuff that's gone on the main bus, and I've and, and and a few other things besides. That's a lot of the construction. I've done a few other little bits and pieces. Like I was talking about this before. I've now I've now got this feeding out onto both um, both sides of the, onto two belts here, which in theory is supposed to keep this running all the time. But there still seems to be some bottlenecks up here. Um, I'm not sure what's causing the bottlenecks. Is it this? Is it this belt? It's not quite full, so it shouldn't be. I don't know. This is going to be something to investigate to find out why these. Maybe it's just that I need another machine on here. I can ha I can have a bit more throughput from uh, from one of these mining drills. We, we we shall see. But I also massively extended the amount of the number of steam turbines here that are running off the. Um, uh, they don't call steam. They call them little ones steam engines. that are running off the uh, the pyroflux energy generation here. So all the pyroflux that's being produced by these by this system is going into this tank, then being turned, then being used to boil this water. I, I'm not quite sure exactly how this reaction is supposed to work. I mean, is is pyroflux basically some kind of molten sodium? So when you mix it with water, it just boils it incredibly power. I don't know, but. Whatever, whatever it is, we've managed to get through all of the pyroflux that was available, so the system has now slowed down a lot. But this many steam engines was capable of producing a decent amount of power. So because that slowed down quite a lot, we had some power issues. Um, Mark came and put in these um, dirty, dirty gas power stations that are burning petroleum gas. And even with that, we're still producing it faster than we know what to do with. So that's going to produce a lot of... It produces a lot of pollution, sure, but it also produces a lot of power. And we were running low on power when the other stuff went to sleep. So... <laughs> Entertainingly, the um, at the beginning of the episode, I was saying, yeah, we'll try and get solar power up and running so we can have some slightly cleaner, um, slightly cleaner power production, even if it's just during the day. Chat suggested we should make a make like a thousand of these um, wind turbines, but then we worked out that the thousand wind turbines will produce something like 20% of the amount of power we need. So that's going to be a rather big project if we do try and go over to wind power. Um, so instead of instead of going for the the nice clean solar or wind generation, we've gone for the exact opposite. We've gone for burning petrol in order to generate power, and it's absolutely filthy. My goodness, look at that! Um, producing 
I don't even I don't even see, I don't see the um, I don't see the pollution um, generation level of this, but it, it is disgusting. Um, look at that. It, even we, even with these air purifiers here running away, ha um, hopefully running away. I can't tell if they're yes, they are running. It's still producing pollution in this area and getting and getting gradually worse. That's horrific. Um, but you know, it's producing the power. We need to keep the base running, so I guess I can't complain too much. <laughs> oh dear. Another problem we've run into is that one of the things that the core mining is producing is this mineral water. So we're producing, we're not using that anyway yet because there's only like three things that use it and we've just got massive quantities of it coming out. So I've fed it down here into a station which is collecting large quantities of it, um, just generally filling up. And then over here I've got a flare stack and apparently in uh, Crastorio 2 you can void any liquid through a flare stack and you can void any gas through a flare stack as well. Um, to be honest, I think I preferred the uh, the Angel Bob's version where you had clarifiers for liquids and flare stacks for gases, but maybe it's just sort of spraying it out into the atmosphere in a very very fine mist. I don't know. There, there, there is just a little bit a little purple cloud come out of the top of it. So <clears throat> it is capable of dealing with any fluid basically. So we're getting we're getting rid of the overflow there. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a uh, cheesy way of getting rid of excess, but since we have literally nothing using this, the only other way to do it would be just to stockpile enormous quantities of it. And I don't think we want enormous quantities of mineral water. I don't think it's going to be that valuable. There are places where you can dig it up. I, dig, I, I built over a 5.1 million patch of mineral water there, but I didn't care because we're not using it. I don't think we're going to use a huge amount of it, and there's probably more patches of it around anyway. Um, that said, I can't, I can't see any, but... I'm sure there will be more patches around that we can use if we if if we need if and when we need it, um, or if not, we'll just carry it. We'll, oh, there's some, 1.8 million down there. We'll probably be okay with what we're pulling out of the ground over here, though. So there's been other other people have done stuff as well. Tristan has continued with the uh, the railway system here, and looks like he's put down some ghosts for railway systems over here as well. Um, <clears throat> Whether we're going to end up using this one or not, we, we should wait and see because you don't want to use you don't want to set up too many core mining facilities because for each one you put down it will still use the full amount of power, but it will produce at a slightly slower rate. I think we want to have maybe we want to have six. So there's one there, two, three, four. Maybe we do use that one, five, six. We'll see how seven. There's one plenty of them around, so we'll see it. We'll see how it goes. See what we feel like. Um, but the thing is, the more of them you put down, uh, at the moment, the amount of power this is using is easily covered by the amount of pyroflux it's producing. But if we carry on using, if we carry on putting more and more of them down, they'll be producing less and less pyroflux per um, per mining drill, so we won't get as much power out of it. So it's it's a balancing act. Um, he's Tristan also put in the uh, the greenhouses across here, which are just produce stockpiling enormous quantities of wood no wonder we're using so much power um, <laughs> and these are um, this, this is an attempt to basically stop the pollution co that's coming from the smelting area drifting upwards up this way and it seems to be basically working <clears throat> but I suspect it would be a lot more efficient to use the um, use use the air scrubbers we'll, we'll we'll see how we go with that in the future oh and speaking of trains he's also put in some more bus drop stations down here and we need and we'll need a lot more of them in the future so the, yeah we started to have problems with the copper supply because the amount of copper that's being dug up and processed here is insufficient insufficient for our needs we're producing actually it seems we I don't know how this is being balanced okay we are we are using this as the pre by preference but it wasn't it wasn't enough when we, it's not enough when the whole factory is running but at the moment everything's gone idle because we're not doing any research and nobody's playing and running around and grabbing stuff off the off the bus in order to build things so the, the factory is um, a little bit quieter now if you want to see it running absolutely flat out you'll need to come along to the stream so as I was saying we've um, uh, Mark has been was working on the on the oil processing here and 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 the, uh, the producing these these sort of um, producing the oil by not byproducts the oil um, products. He's also been doing um, been been going out and, and taking the water the biters. So uh, I think this was all finished off last week. So this 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 hasn't been, hasn't changed. But we now have a lovely wall going across here. This is a, a big old choke point area. Maybe we should have tried to clear out this entire area and just had a choke point across here. But then they might have been able to get through here as well. So it might not have been that easy. But anyway, we've, we've got the big old choke point here. And we've got a station here that's, that's supplying it with all the ammunition it can need. Um, again, it's going to need to be robo-ported, but that's a, that's a job for next week once we've got robo-ports. There's another one here going across this um, little, uh, little um, choke point. And then there's been a lot of work gone into, oh, we've got, we've got a wall going across all the way across here now and up here. So there's been a fair amount of work has gone into then trying to liberate this entire area so we can put in a choke point here and a choke point here. And then we'll have an enormous amount of um, uh, construction realm um, and we'll be able to just 
block off yeah we'll have all of this area to play with and and to harvest stuff from um it just needs all of the biters discouraging from it um we've got a wall we've got we do have a wall with a bend in it here which is not ideal because the the uh, the bots tend to have a bit of an issue with it but at the least we don't we don't have any weapons that do splash damage so at the moment it's okay maybe at some point we'll upgrade it to a 45 degree wall going across there we shall see um, but again we'll still have problems with the uh, with the bots we may need to have another a separate roboport area over here we shall see how that goes um it's it's all solved problems it's just deciding which of the solutions that we've come up with in the past is the one to go for so with the um, with the expansion comes a little bit a little bit of death. Sad, I'm sad, very sad to say. So um, yeah, we've had a couple of Mike's died a couple of times. We've had oh the most exciting and and, and, and novel one though, and, and something completely different is down here. Mark died by being hit by a train. So that was um, it was inevitable. It had to happen at some point. But that brings the total deaths now up to eight for Mike. Nearly all of them to I think nearly all of them to worms, but a couple to biters, maybe one to biters. Uh, four deaths for Mark again, mostly worms, and one death for me in the uh, last. In the, a week ago when we were working over over here and the worms have so far done most have got the lion's share of those deaths or the worms share with their uh, 10 deaths there caused by worms two by biters and one by a cargo wagon as, as previously discussed <laughs> so the um the expansion is going well as i say um with with only with only some slight um with only a, a, a minor body count and we're going to carry on keeping these gravestones around the map because it's it's kind of it's, it's a sort of in memoriam and also it's kind of funny <laughs> and I say that because this isn't Minecraft, so it's not me doing all of the dying. Oh, while I'm talking about people getting credit for things, I should mention that this coal mine was built by Mark, so um, which is probably why it doesn't have uh, warehouses in there. Um, I don't know, because uh, Tristan seems to have th thoroughly got on board with the warehouses, and I, I have to an extent as well. But to be honest, it's fine. The chests will work perfectly well for this. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, we don't. We're not going to have balancing problems there. He also. And we're a little bit less proud of him for this, and this is this is surprise this is this is surprisingly gross for Mark. Um, so the 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 um yeah oh yeah we'll look at it from the other end. So we have we have coal on the bus, which is nice. You need you need coal on the bus because it's used for various things. So yeah the the coal flows along the bus, lovely as you'd expect. There's a bit of a kink in it there because somebody probably me um, made a mistake here or didn't realise that this this row was already taken by steel girders, but but sure. We just had a, I think we just had a, a meteor land on some, um, on some track, but never mind. So yeah, it comes along here. There's a bit of a kink here, but that's that's. I mean, that's not our fault really. It's because it was back in the days when we we had some water here and we didn't have landfill at the time, so it had to kink around the around the water. Then it comes down here. It goes through the middle of the smelting, which is a little bit of an odd choice, but okay. I mean, I suppose you need coal for both of those, so yeah, it comes from over here, and then it comes up this way, uh, round round, and then round here. Um, oh, this has been improved a bit, actually. It was much more gross than this before because it used to come all the way over here to intercept with the co intersect with the coal that was coming from the mine up here and then came back across, all the way back across here and then wiggled its way through here and then up into the station. So this is all a bit disgusting, but, I mean, it's, it's slightly better than it was and I suppose in the future, once this coal patch here runs out, which won't be very long because there's only 7,000 here, uh, we should probably be prior. We are prioritising the input from here. Good. So once that that once that runs out, we will then stop probably stop making solid pr processed fuel here. <clears throat> we'll probably bring in processed fuel. So there will be a belt instead of there being a processed fuel pickup station here, there'll be a processed fuel drop off station. It'll all then push down here. We'll have okay. This will be a bit nasty, but we can deal with that. That'll bring the process fuel out. In fact, maybe we'll just remove this entire um, power plant and put it somewhere else, somewhere it's a bit less. So we can have a, save this area over here from being used for all of this power stuff. And it's all a bit disgusting with belts going in ridiculous ways. So that's something, that, yeah, we, we can tidy that up at some point if we can be bothered. Or, you know, knowing what we're like, or knowing what I'm like, certainly. I think other people might be a bit tidier than me. But knowing what I'm like, it'll probably just get left like this because it's not in the way and there's no reason to change it. <laughs> we shall see. So, I think that brings you up to date on everything we've done. Um, it doesn't feel like we've had quite the leap forward we've had in the last two episodes. I mean, well, that, that said, I've made two new science packs. I feel that's pretty good. Um, and, we start, and we've got bots as well. So though, And oil processing and, and so on. So... We've we've definitely made some good progress. It doesn't um it doesn't have quite the major here look at this massive new thing we've built that we had had last week. But I think it's still some very good progress and things are going well. And yet, as you can see, we've got bots, but we haven't got haven't got the infrastructure set up to support them properly yet. 
So, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this catch-up video. Come back on uh, on Monday to um, to see us to see us streaming it live and and trying to get done all of the things that I've just been talking about and see how many of them. Firstly, see how many we remember and also how many we actually manage to get done in the next stream. Maybe we'll launch a rocket. Maybe we won't. We shall see. <laughs> I suspect we probably won't. Launching a rocket is is, is a fairly big job. Come back on Wednesday to uh, to watch the Dyson Sphere program stream. I'm, things are going quite well in that. I've been playing around with titanium and trying to get yellow science. So that's going well um there'll be lots lots more to do in that um and then at the weekend for the catch-up videos as well of course and i'll try and get some more friday um fr friday factorio tutor tutorial videos coming out as well finally please go along, head over and check over um the the channel sponsor that's trefoil.be if you go to trefoil.be slash lawrence plays um, either by typing it in or if you if you really want or you can just follow the elegant link in the description that's probably going to be much easier you can then get 20 percent off your first order and um if you if you put by putting the code lawrence plays in in the uh, in the you know in the in, in the form when you're checking out you know how these things work if you do that then it makes me happy it makes you happy because you get a discount it makes them happy because they get to have some business everybody's a winner so yes please please do lots of that lots of um lots of lots of going to the sponsored stuff and all that sort of thing um and also stick around join the discord if you want to find out what what else is going to be going on i've got some plans for various um multiplayer sessions and things like that so we'll see we'll, we'll see what uh, when 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 those things find their way to the top and, um, and and what we can get done so thank you very much for watching i hope to see you in all of the upcoming stuff that happens on this channel i'll see you then bye bye